What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making kind of like a Jollibee inspired spaghetti, really, the Filipino spaghetti. So we're gonna be making that. It's a little bit on the sweeter side. If you're Italian, close your eyes, cover your ears, close your mouth. <laughs> because we're getting crazy. Um, it's definitely not your typical pasta. It goes against all the rules. So if you're a purist, you know, this probably isn't the video, but if you are a spaghetti and tomato sauce purist, this probably is not the video for you, but it's the video for us, so let's get into it. I'm really excited to be making this pasta. It's the first time I'm ever making this pasta, so if I screw up. All my Filipinos, I know you guys are super forgiving, so please forgive me from now. But yeah, let's get into cooking and talking and, you know, I haven't been on the platform in like a month and let's just talk about like my mental health while I cook and what's been going on with me because I know a lot of you guys are curious. I get messages from you all the time on Instagram. Thank you so much. It means the most to me and all of you guys coming into the community section, always showing support. That always means so much to me. So let's get our ingredients and let's get into it. Okay, so here are our main ingredients. We have this red and juicy hot dog. I actually kind of want to have some fun with this hot dog. We're going to cut it up and put it into the pasta because that's what's typically in it. I also have some ground pork here. I know typically people use beef for it. They can use pork too. They kind of mix it up. Let me know down below how you like it, um, but this is what we're going to be using today. Okay, so over here I have a red pepper. I have onion. I have garlic and I also have a carrot here. I'm gonna mince these all up. I also wanted to play around with these juicy hot dogs. I wanna see how the color takes um, depending on how it's cooked. So if it's roasted, if it's fried, if it's boiled, how it maintains its color. So we're gonna be trying all three methods today. So I'm just peeling the pepper right now. I'm getting all the insides out, the veins, or whatever you wanna call it. So right now I'm just gonna cut into manageable pieces. You don't have to try to go at things all at once. It's better to cut it into manageable pieces um, and get the desired look that you're going for than just chopping away. So I'm just gonna chop these into lengthwise pieces so I can get some little square guys happening. And right now I'm just getting the onion ready to mince. Right now I'm just crushing the garlic and I am prepping the garlic. I just finished um, mincing all of this up. I'm gonna go ahead now and mince my carrot. Yeah, and I'm wearing gloves right now because, uh, I mean, I wear gloves for so many different reasons. I could tell you a million reasons. But the main reason why I'm wearing gloves right now is because uh, I'm starting to get chef hands, y'all. Like, I'm like, my hands are becoming discolored, they're becoming dry. They're oh, freaking thicker. Yo, they look like they can put in some work my hands. Okay, I think that's enough carrot. So we have carrot here, we have garlic here. I'm gonna mince up just a couple more pieces of garlic. I think it needs it. I think I'm actually gonna start by getting some color on the beef and then going into um, this portion. So, and I'm gonna just start with some olive oil and my pork over here and we're just gonna throw the pork in and let it do its thing. I kind of wanna see some charriness on it, to be honest. Um, that might've been a lot of pork, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna break this up over here. So I'm just gonna leave this like that. I'm not gonna touch it, and we're gonna let it chill out. Okay, so let's get started with these guys. I'm really curious to see if these maintain their color or not. I have it over here, this guy right now. I have boiling water over here. I'm just gonna throw that in and see what happens. My oven's on. I'm just gonna grab the same container. I'm gonna throw just some oil on it, and we're gonna roast it, maybe. I'm gonna throw some oil in here and we're gonna fry one of them. One's frying. <laughs> wow, so you can see it really did maintain that color. I'm really surprised, that's really nice actually. I would love to make this into a corn dog, eh? Yum, oh that's sick. Oh, I just got something in my eye. Okay, this guy's becoming charry underneath, so I'm just gonna flip it. Give it a nice flip. Okay, this is going, this is getting super charry, so I'm gonna start dropping these guys in there. So I'm gonna start with the pepper, the onion, and the carrots. And I think we're okay actually to just dump the um, most of the garlic in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there and break it up. Let's see. So frying it actually maintains the color a lot more. I would even say that's a little bit more vibrant than it was before in comparison. Like wow. It's a little bit dull, but also there's oil on it, so that could be it too. It could just be making it really shiny, right? But I actually think that I like 
um, the frying method more than the boiling method just because it maintains its shape more, you see? Whereas this one kind of explodes, like it's a boiled hot dog, right? We all know this. Maybe if I turned down the heat a little bit more and did it a little bit slower, it would, um, it wouldn't catch like that, it would, right? So I could do that next time. So I just have some pork bone broth here that I created. Hopefully it's still good. It's been sitting in there, I didn't freeze it. Okay, it's good, thank God. So I'm gonna put some pork bone broth in here. You could put chicken broth in there. Honestly, that would still be really good. But I'm gonna put some pork bone broth. Um, see how it's like really jiggly? That's because we got all the collagen in it. And that's really good. Fitness people are going crazy right now for bone broth. It has a lot of collagen, has you know a lot of health benefits. So you can get it from like Whole Foods, I believe. I'm not sure where else you can get it, but I know for a fact you can get it from Whole Foods. So collagen is really good. Actually, when I was in Korea, they would literally have posters of like their version of like what a beautiful woman is, right? Um, in marketing and they would show this beautiful woman and they would be advertising her like very like crystallized like beautiful skin and be like you need to eat like hawk like the the feet of the pork because it has lots of collagen in it and it tastes really good so yeah collagen is like really great I mean it's just using that whole part of the animal it's like figuring out without wasting anything how can I use every piece of this animal um, and make it good and pork bone broth is just one of those things where a lot of people really gross out by the feet but if you're gonna eat it, any part of the animal I feel like you should be able to eat all the animal I say that as I literally cringe at the thought of balls <laughs> Yeah, I haven't, haven't delved into that aspect of, of, of food, but I'm just, you know, I've had a hot dog, so most likely it's been in there. Ah, moving on. Tomato sauce here. I'm just gonna give this a good glug. I'm gonna mix this around, see how it looks like. This is by no means 100% authentic. Um, I've never been to the Philippines. I've never had a Filipino um, person make me this so I don't really know what authentic is to be honest with you this is just me going off of what friends have said and what I've seen on the internet so if there's a better way to do it please let me know down below I'm using a little bit of my culinary knowledge um, mixed with what I've seen online so that's what's happening here right now <laughs> now from what I know there is ketchup in the actual um, sauces that you can purchase uh, so I'm adding some ketchup in there to get there, to get that going. And then just over here, I'm going to grab a pot and I'm gonna kind of create like a tea almost. So I'm gonna take this out and just sort of simmer. Mmm, that smells amazing. What does that smell like? It smells like a spice. That's for sure. I can't pinpoint it, it smells really good, okay. So this is what it looks like. You can see that. So I'm gonna put about a quarter cup, I would say. Give this a mix. Into, just into this guy here. And I'm just gonna let that simmer and reduce it. And I think that the longer it sits and simmers, um, the more that I reduce it, so the more I'm evaporating the water, um, the redder it's gonna get. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm actually gonna go in Mm, oh my god, it tastes amazing. I've also seen people put evaporated milk into it. So we're gonna be putting some evaporated milk into it. And I think that it's gonna change it to more of an orange color, but that's where these guys come in. I think that the reason why I put this on is because I think we are gonna need this to maintain that redness, especially if we're putting evaporated milk in it. So I've seen that. I've also seen people put sugar in it. I'm gonna put sugar in it as well. I sort of see like the benefits out of everything that I've seen online. Some people do it only one specific way, but I'm taking everything that I've seen online and everything that I've learned, I'm incorporating it to what I think will taste good. So feel free to do whatever you want. There is no rules to cooking, technically. I mean, as long as it tastes good, and you're enjoying it that's all that matters but I mean from a culinary perspective and from like you know certain like industries you know like the French you know they would beg to differ and the Italians that there is only specific ways to make it and that's it and that's fine that's just a different perspective and I respect all of them but this is what we're doing today I'm gonna go ahead and open this evaporated milk and just get it ready I have two different tomato paste. I have this guy here in a tube and I have this one. I like this for different reasons. Um, I like this because if I'm not, if I don't plan on using a whole thing of tomato paste, um, a lot of time it becomes moldy. So I like the tube because I, I just want a little squeeze into something. Um, it, it's great for, you know, rounding flavors out, adding acid. Um, it's great for color. So if I want just a little bit in whatever I'm making, if I'm having fun, this is where I'll pull up this guy. 
But I know in the next few days, I'm gonna be using quite a bit of tomato paste just because I'm trying to develop my own recipes right now. So, um, and that's why I went to school because, you know, it's, it's one thing to go online and be able to take someone's recipe and like transform into something delicious. That takes skill on its own. But it's another completely skill to be able to develop your own recipe from the knowledge you've learned and the ingredients that you have available in your house. So, I'm trying to do that right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some tomato paste in there. That might be a little bit too much. I'm doing about half a tablespoon, about a tablespoon of tomato paste. And we're just gonna mix that in there. So I'm just gonna come into half, come into half, come into half, and go. And now, I'm gonna put some white sugar in it. I kinda wanna put brown sugar in it because I just feel like the caramelized like the caramelized flavor of brown sugar would be a lot better, but I don't have any brown sugar that's not hard AF. <laughs> so we're just gonna use about a tablespoon of regular sugar. Okay, and we're gonna give this a mix. I'm using the wrong thing. And it's starting to show like that glossiness that we're all used to. Um, but it's just, I'm starting to see that glossiness that is very reminiscent of the um, Jolly Bee spaghetti. Mmm. Wow, that tastes like Jolly Bee. I'm gonna strain this into there to deglaze the pan. There, okay, let's put this in here. Oh yeah, and right away I'm seeing the redness in there. It's, okay, maybe that wasn't the best idea for the sausage because it kind of changes the color of the sausage, but I think that's okay. You guys saw my Instagram post. Some of you have, some of you haven't. I really like this pasta. I got it from Costco. So I'm just gonna grab a handful. In there and I'm gonna salt the water as well. Okay, let's give this a mix and let's add some of the evaporated milk in there. I think I like it more without the evaporated milk actually. It's salt. Okay, so here we have the roasted guy. So this one's a lot more puffier. Can you see that in comparison? I think I like the fried version more. This is a lot more puffier. I don't mind that, but I do think I like the fried version better. This is just on a low simmer. Oh, and it opened up a little bit. Maybe it was too hot in there, but it did open up a little bit. So, boiled, fried, roasted. Fried's better. Cool. Mmm. I feel like that bone broth makes such a difference. Okay, I've given it a little bit of a rinse, um, just cause it's gonna be sitting there. I don't want it to overcook, so I rinsed it with cold water. Um, but it's still fairly warm. You can, I don't know if you can see the steam from back there, but there's steam. So I'm just gonna plate this like so. I'm gonna put a lot of sauce on this, just because. Okay, there, done. Sauce is ready. We have our hot dogs. All right, let's eat. <laughs> we got our hot dogs at the side. I actually kind of want to dip it. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. This hot dog is slightly sweet. <clears throat> Still tastes like your typical hot dog. That's mom. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is exciting. I'm like scared. Are my pits okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's give it a go. Wow, here we go. First time ever. <gasps> I'm forgotten. I'm forgetting the freaking cheese, aren't I? Some of you guys are probably screaming at me. Don't try the Jolly Bee. Okay, I'm sorry guys, but I only have this cheese frozen and I only have a tech, oh, damn it. I only have a Tex-Mex, Tex-Mex. My apologies, but my little dinky, <laughs> my little dinky cheese on top. Wow. Ooh. I love it in the container, so reminiscent of Korea. Okay, sorry about the sign. sounds outside, but I hope whoever they're going to, I hope everyone's okay. Mmm, oh my god. <laughs> wow.
Wow. This is bomb. Well, I'm shook at right now. I feel like I could have used, honestly, a little more carrot. Wow, that is so bomb. Actually, I think next time I wouldn't even put the charriness on the on the meat. I think it's a little unnecessary. Also, cooking is the right trying it. But yeah, anyways, guys, I feel like I've just had a lot of growing to do, and I feel a lot better. I feel like more like I feel more like myself than I ever had in my entire life. And hmm, like that, I think a lot of it has to do with me realizing that. My depression is actually a byproduct of my ADHD. I've had ADHD since I was a kid. Girls exhibit different than boys. And most boys have, more boys have ADHD than girls. And I spoke to my doctor about it. And he agrees that he thinks I have ADHD, not depression. So I haven't taken my antidepressants because I don't think I need it. But it is going to get, it is gonna, especially because of what's happening now in the world, um, it's going to take a lot longer for me to get diagnosed properly and on medication, if that. But I think now realizing that understanding the things that I struggle with, like I have a million thoughts per second. I can never really get a hold of my thoughts. But I feel like now understanding that, like where it's all coming from, I've been able to slow everything down and feel a lot better about who I am as a person. And some people have made me feel like I should be ashamed of having ADHD and depression, but I'm not. One of my favorite artists, Joyner Lucas, he talks about it in his music, and that makes me feel like really confident, but for the longest time, I kind of found ashamed of it. I'm actually being slightly in denial of it, but I've finally actually did research on it, and I'll leave some links in the community section, and I know it's what I have. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm 100% okay with it. It's something that I deal with and that's it. <laughs> yeah, all around, I feel a lot better. I feel like more like myself and I hope this video shows that. <laughs> I know I'm still gonna mess up. So if you think this is, this is a video saying I'm never gonna mess up again, that's not true. It's gonna happen. I'm a little slow, <laughs> you know? So, but I feel like if I do mess up in the future, I feel like I'll be able to handle a lot maturely, a lot more maturely and not be scared. I don't want to mess up in the future, but you know, it might happen, you never know. <laughs> mm. I wonder how these are made. Like, how do they put the redness on there? It's so good. Is it ever have a barbecue? I'm going to lose hot dogs. <laughs> Mm. 
these hot dogs would be so good to make as a corn dog oh my god hell yeah with cheese I need a drink. <laughs> Some Coca Cola here. I have no nails. Oh my god. Who else is struggling during this quarantine <laughs> with their body? <laughs> it's good and it's bad. Honestly, I feel like my anatomy needs a break from all the beauty things that we do to ourselves. I've like been hating it, but loving it. Like, I haven't, honestly. I'm such a big fan of pedicures. I've been getting pedicures since I could get pedicures. And if I, it doesn't matter how broke I've ever been in my entire life, I've always found money to get my nails done. <laughs> my toes look like a camel's foot right now. Like I swear to you, they look so bad. I haven't seen them look this bad in, I couldn't even tell you. Like I think maybe I've never even seen them look this bad. Like from whenever I was able to start getting pedicures, I did. I always, my mom would always get her nails done. I always get pedicures from as long as I could remember, you know? Oh no. So I just had to change mics. If the, if the mic is really bad in this video, it's because I literally, the thing just died. I was actually wondering, I'm like, wow, this thing's been going for a while. When is it gonna die? And I just did that. So. Sorry, um, so the, the, if the audio is kind of bad up until now because I just put my other mic in, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. But yeah, so, like, but I've also been loving it because I am like a makeup hoarder. I hoard makeup. I buy makeup when I don't need it and I hoard it and my wallet and my finances and my future does not like it. It does not approve. <laughs> but since I haven't, like, I just, I haven't felt the need to go on to Sephora or, or on any of my favorite, like, MAC makeup, which is Canadian. Ooh. Most of my makeup is honestly MAC makeup, if I'm being frank with you, but um, I still love them. But I haven't felt the need to online shop in terms of makeup. Uh, so I've been using and like exploring all the older makeup that I have. <laughs> I'm probably supposed to throw some of it away, but it doesn't smell bad or look bad, so I'm keeping it. That's the way I roll with my makeup. Do not tell me otherwise because I will not listen. <laughs> I used to love drugstore makeup i haven't loved it in such a long time so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna start dabbling to drugstore makeup because the drugstores obviously are still open right so and they have makeup sections holla so if i start running out of concealer i think i'm just gonna run over there and i'm honestly super excited <laughs> mm! damn it We did this, guys. I don't know what it is about Coke, but when you wash it down after a meal, especially like this, it's just so good, especially with fried chicken. Like right now I'm kind of exploring drinks and food and how you can pre um, prepare them. And I bought a shit ton of alcohol just for like tasting. I'm trying to come up with like a menu myself 
just like playing around with menus and like that idea. Um, it's like actually a class I still have to take in my school because of what happened, everything got stopped. And even before then, I was, I was having some issues with my mom, so I wasn't, and, and my depression got really bad, so I wasn't really attending class my last semester, which sucks. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of playing around with that. And there's Coca-Cola and like this, just, this is like perfect. This is a perfect meal with you guys. Thank you for being here. I hope that whatever you guys are going through right now, you get through it. And just remember, whatever doesn't kill you, like literally makes you stronger. I know some of you guys are going to be losing people in your lives. Um, the chances are there's going to be at least a couple of you that lose someone really important to you in your life. I know how that is. I had a friend pass away, you know, right on New Year's. <laughs> right away, 2020 was shit for me. So none of this is a surprise. They're talking about aliens and UFOs and none of us are shook. <laughs> By the way, I already knew that. But none of us are shook, you know? So this, like a lot of you, a lot of these horrible things are going to be happening to us but just know that they're in a better place I mean any, even if you don't know that for sure um, just know that as long as you're sending out good energy they're gonna receive it okay energy is very powerful that's what I believe in maybe you don't believe in it maybe you can entertain the idea with me for a second but that's what I believe in and I feel like everything unfortunately as horrendous as it can be happens for a reason and it's meant to teach us something as bad as it can be sometimes and you just need to find the, re the really positive lesson in the really messed up situation and become a stronger person and you're going to have your ups and downs and it's it, it's going to be really it's going to be really rough but you know it's going to get better and my, my prayers and my heart and all the positive energy that i can admit from my body is with you and i hope you guys are all staying safe i hope that um youtube as much as it is for me i hope it as much as for you a little bit of an escape and i hope you're enjoying yourself when this is all done, I would love to go to Jollibee. Um, I looked on Uber Eats and a couple apps. I didn't see it. Maybe it's on DoorDash. I don't know. But um, I would love to try it like neck to neck. Maybe I'll do it on my Instagram. Follow me on my Instagram. I'm always posting there on my stories, cooking new things. You guys are going to see all the new recipes um, that I'm trying out before they even come on because usually when I'm testing things out, I put it on my Instagram. But I would love to try it side by side in another video. Anyways, I love you so much. Thank you for watching. And until next time. Oh my goodness, Jesus.